going through the homework on expected frequency. Um, sorry, I'm just grabbing a calculator. Uh, right, the first one. An unfair six-sided die is rolled 100 times and lands on a four 30 times. How many times would you... Would it be expected to land on a four in 300 rolls? Okay. So, the probability of getting a four is the probability of a four is 30 out of 100. Okay, so it says it lands on a four 30 times out of 100 rolls. So 30 out of 100. You can simplify that if you want. So how many times would you expect to land on a four in 300 rolls? So remember I said when you want to do expected frequency, it's the probability multiplied by the number of trials. So that's 90 times. How many times would you expect to land on a 4 in 600 rolls? So you take the probability and multiply it by the number of trials. That's 180. How many times would a fair six-sided die expect it to land on a 4? Okay, so again, it's expected, right? This time the dice is fair, which means the probability of getting a 4 is 1 out of 6. That's the probability, and then you multiply that by the um, number of trials, which in this case is 600. So that is 100 times you would expect the 6. Okay? So the first couple of times it's an unfair dice, which is why the probability is different. The last one it's a fair dice, so we go with our proper probability that we know. A card is selected at random from a standard pack of playing cards and then replaced. This is done 1,040 times. How many times would you, and here we are again, expect to get the following cards? So a red card. Okay, so the probability of getting a red card is 26 out of 52. That's the probability. Multiply it by the number of trials, which is 1040. So that is 520. Uh, a king. So there's four kings in the deck out of 52. And again, multiply it by the number of trials. So that's 80 kings you would expect to get. And the last one is the queen of hearts. There's only one queen of hearts in the deck, so it's one out of 52, multiplied by 1040. And that's 20. Okay. The probability the player wins a slot machine is 1 over 9. The cost of each game is 50 cent. How many times would a player be expected to win in 90 plays? Okay, so again, this is expected. So we get the probability of a win and we multiply it by the number of trials. And if you put that into your calculator, you get 10. So we'd expect them to win 10 times. If the slot machine pays out two euro for every win, how much money could the player win in 90 plays? So it, play, it pays out two euro for every win and we're expecting 10 wins. So that's 20 euro. Would the player expect to make a profit or a loss in 90 plays? Okay. So if they play 90 times and it costs 50 cent a game, that is 45 euro. And we are expecting them to win 20 euro. So the cost to play is 45. The win we're expecting is 20 euro, so that is a 25 euro loss. Okay, last one's slightly different, but essentially expected frequency, probability multiplied by trials, the whole way down. Okay, so have a look over them, check them against your own answers. If there's any mistakes, correct them, and, and make sure you let me know if you don't understand. Okay, so the last thing in this chapter, and we're finished the chapter after this, is sample spaces for independent events, which is 
fancy enough. I told you when we finished up with two-way tables and tree diagrams and all that that I was going to come back to them. This is me coming back to them, okay? So essentially what this whole section is, is it's a combination of sample spaces. Okay, so sample spaces are systematic listing, two-way tables and tree diagrams. So a combination of sample spaces and then everything we've learned about probability. We're going to put the two of them together in one question. All right. So two fair six-sided dice, six dice are rolled and the scores are added together. That's going to be important. Find the probability that the score is. Okay, so we need to do our two-way table. So here it is. Uh, roll a one and a one, you get two. A one and a two, you get three. A one and a three, you get four. And so on. We've done this before. So we're just trying to get the... Three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there is my two-way table done. Right, what's the probability of getting a seven? So there are one, two, three, four, five, six of them out of a total of 36. Okay, you can leave it like that or if you want, you can write it as one sixth. The probability of getting an even number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, there's eighteen of them out of a possible thirty-six. That simplifies to a half. Half of them are even. Um, everybody know what even means? So an even number is a number that divides by two. Okay, in case anybody wasn't sure. It divides by two. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and so on. They're all your even numbers, okay? Odd then is the other numbers, so the ones that don't divide by 2. So if there's 18 even, there has to be 18 odd. And again, that's a half. Now, a prime number, okay? You definitely learn about prime numbers in primary school. But a prime number is a number divisible only by itself and one. Okay, so three is a prime number because it's three times one and there's no other possibility. Five is a prime number because it's five times one and there's no other possibility. Six though. So six is six times one, but it could also be two times three. So that means it's not prime. Okay, so that's what prime numbers are. We'll be coming back to them in not the next chapter, but the one after. Um, so our prime numbers are Two, three, five, seven, three, five, seven, five, seven. Now nine isn't because nine can be three by three. Sorry, they went to funny colour when I... They're all going to be like that, aren't they? Erg. Okay, so where was I? Mm, seven. Yeah, nine isn't, because nine can be three by three. Okay, so that's not prime. Five is, seven is, nine is not. 7 is, 9 is, but 11 is. 11 is only 11 times 1. There's 11, not 9, and 7. 
How many is there? One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, I'm gonna have to do them. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, I think that's fifteen out of thirty-six. And again, if you want to type that into your calculator using the fraction button, you get five over twelve. Okay, and a multiple by three just means one of the bits of the three times tables. So the three times tables are three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, and so on. So any bit of that. So three is obviously part of the three times tables. So is six, uh, three, six, mm, six, and nine, six, and nine. Six and nine and then nine and twelve is in the three times tables. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that is twelve out of thirty-six. And that can be written as a third. Okay? So the two-way table, which we already know how to do, and probability, which we already know how to do, and you just combine the two. Okay, here's one with a tree diagram. A coin, a fair coin, is flipped twice. Use a tree diagram to determine the probability. Okay, so here's my dot, my root. If I flip a coin, there's two options, which means two branches, so heads or tails, and that's flipping it once. So if I flip it a second time, still two options heads or tails and two options heads or tails and then you work your way do you remember from the start to each of the four end points so this one is head head this one is head tail this one is tail head and this one is tail tail okay so now I've got my tree diagram done find the probability of getting two heads so two heads only appears once out of four Quarter. Second one is a tail 